Hello and welcome to another update video about Bitcoin. For Bitcoin, the situation remains bullish, but it has a lot of catching up to do. I've placed the wave five of three here now at the top, but I'm not convinced the wave five is already in. It doesn't have the right look really. I mean, minimum targets have been achieved for this fifth wave, yeah, which was here the, um, the 38.2 Fibonacci retracement of, uh, if we measure the length, right, of the waves one through three. Uh, sorry, the um, minimum target is the 30.9k level, the 38.2 FIP extension highlighted in one of the last videos as relevant level. That's why we also um, um, looked at these targets before, but it's sort of really the minimum really that you want. I mean, ideally it's pushing a bit higher, more into the 31.5 to 31.8k region. And why is that the case? Well, the case because if you look at the higher degree structure here, which is the blue count, so obviously what's what's happening here in yellow is just the subway structure. So what I'm going to do now, before we look at that, I'm going to hide some of these trend reversal areas. Yeah, they have been really helpful, I hope, for many in terms of determining possible entry points into the market. And it seems like the FOMO train is going, right? The FOMO train has left the station. Mm. Talked about that extensively over the last few weeks. Hopefully nobody is FOMOing because honestly, we didn't, we haven't been talking for, uh, you know, about anything else for the last four weeks or so that the focus remains here on the upside and that if a third wave rally is starting, it will be rapid. It will be fast. Okay. Uh, a lot of people still can't believe it. I know, but it's, you know, that that's typically the problem that you have in, in these markets that a lot of people don't realize the trend is up until it's too late. But for now, we continue to focus on higher bar while paying a lot of attention to critical support levels, okay? Because, you know, there's obviously nothing in this market that would guarantee that markets continue to move higher. Um, and as we can see now, Bitcoin is coming down a bit, quite a bit actually. So it might be that we're now coming back in this blue fourth wave. So let's see. I mean, uh, we're going to take a look. First of all, I wanted to take a look at why this third wave ideally pushes a little bit higher. So for that, we take here the length of the wave one, go to the low of the blue wave two, and then the target for the third wave would be basically ideally, yeah, the 31 and K level. That's what we've been talking about, you know, 31 and to 31.8 K, but bear in mind, the minimum is now already reached. Yeah, let's see. But um, from here, if that is the case, then what would be the support area? I did highlight before, I'm not gonna move it yet. This is, um, in my opinion, still support that's relevant also for the blue fourth wave should we come down, which means I just leave it where it is. So as long as we're holding 29,130, my immediate focus would be on higher. If we come back into that region, it might be another pullback zone that you might choose to trade. That's entirely up to you. But ideally, it's not gonna go below 29,137. But yeah, I mean, Two options here, two options. This is already the fourth wave and typically the A wave in a fourth wave yeah, or the, the A wave of any correction is quite sharp. So this might be the A wave we're currently witnessing. Um, but it could also be just the wave two of the fifth wave. So they, they are the two options. I mean, they're both bullish at the moment as long as we're holding above 29,137. So either wave three is finished now, we come down at four. Don't necessarily believe it because ideally, looking at the third wave target, we should have pushed a little higher. I mean, not much, you know, but ideally a little higher. So that the option is either it's finished now or it's going to go up much higher actually, because then the other option would be that this is just something like that, right? That this wave five is going to subdivide higher. And then we've got something like this, that this was the wave one of the wave five. This is now the wave two of the wave five. We're going to do something like that. And only then somewhere up here, we're going to finish the, with the wave five. But again, don't try to really figure out every single little wave and micro count because they morph often into different um, structures, especially with all these one, two setups, which we have, which is quite a bullish setup. Therefore, I'm highlighting to you the relevant support areas. But um, yeah, I mean, we can be watching if this is now blue wave four, right? Um, but even in this blue wave four, we shouldn't go below 29,138. Uh, let's just add the retracements again. Let's just double check them. Yes, because 
this 50% retracement, which is relevant for the fourth wave, pretty much overlaps with the previous support area. So I wouldn't move it anywhere. Just leave it where it is while focusing on higher. Nothing else to add here. I think we are in the third wave rally. Um, that's my view at the moment, as long as these support areas are holding and there isn't much more to add really. Right? We talked in the previous video where we could be going and um, maybe we can just double check that. If we zoom out a little bit, quick reminder, we've talked about that extensively that we had this five wave move off the November lows in five waves to the upside. I've been very clear about this trend reversal area, which would be relevant. And that also I would be quite aggressive to scale into this area if we get into it. Of course, when you do this, you never know if the support area is holding or not, but it's not about that. It's about trading, not confirmations, but about trading high reward, low risk. Okay, high reward, low risk. That's really the most objective way of trading, in my opinion. Now, everybody needs to have their own way of doing it. But for me, that's the most comfortable way in crypto because first of all, it doesn't need a lot of time. It doesn't need a lot of attention. Um, basically scaling into the support area has been very clear on the on the 4th of March. I just looked it up again on the 4th of March. I uh, published an opportunities video for channel members. Only do these for channel members um, as part of the, the channel membership. Talked about strategy, talked about that we are entering a very, very critical point in crypto and that a lot of opportunities are lying ahead of us. Since then, many of these coins moved up, I don't know, 30%, 40% more. Yeah, even more. Um, because a lot of these coins came back into their wave two support areas. And this was really what we've been waiting for. After an initial five wave move to the upside, which was the first indication that the trend shifted to the upside, it's very clearly labeled five up yeah, in a wave two. And then a wave two is a corrective pullback, a three wave pullback in a wave two entered the ideal area for a wave two and we're now rallying impulsively okay so hopefully that helped a lot of people um so these these opportunities video come videos come out basically every week haven't published one this week because the market hadn't moved but now that we see some movement i'm gonna publish the next one ideally tomorrow um it's always a bit of work to do it to put it together um but the idea is to give pullback areas right and talk about um talk about um, trade setups but yeah you know this is sort of wave one up wave two down and now the idea is what would be the target for the third wave so the ideal target for a third wave it's sort of well not the ideal necessary but the, what you would expect in crypto as a minimum would be 35 and a half k Bear in mind, this would only be the third wave, but looking at all these sub wave structures, the one, two setups, I would not be surprised if we see extensions all the way up to the 2.618 extension, 45K. What we have seen in this five wave move to the upside is exactly that. The move that started in November, if we measure the length of the wave one, go to the low of the wave two, then it took us basically to the 2.618 extension, which may, which basically mean, what does that mean? A lot of people don't understand what that means. It means that wave three was 2.618 as long as wave one. It's a common target for a third wave in crypto, especially when it's bullish, right? So that's important. Um, and then, um, and then, and then, yeah, someone said that um, it seems to be the same sentiment as it was in November before the FTX dump. So hopefully it doesn't happen again. Oh, I would disagree massively. I would disagree massively. This is an, a completely different structure, the one that we had here. Yeah, We actually were waiting for another low at the time, which happened. Yeah. Um, this was not a bullish structure back here. Look at how messy it is. A lot of overlaps. Yeah, Very messy structure back here. And... Um, Also, what I often highlight, I mean, at the time, yeah, the, of course, there was a bullish scenario as well, but it became unreliable because as I often say, you know, look at the move to the upside, measure the retracements, look for the 78.6 retracement when the price drops below that and sustains below it, which it did. That's typically an indication that this setup, which could have been a one-two setup, but became very messy, would fail. 
which it did, right? We don't have that situation here at the moment. Instead of having very deep pullbacks, we see very, very shallow pullbacks only. And to be honest, it's the first clean impulse that we've had in a while. Yeah, this move of November into February. So the situation is completely different. Um, we still have a lot of bears out there. So because we have so many bears, I think it is still possible to move higher. A lot of people frustrated with price moving up, even though we've been talking about that for months now. Um, you know, and, and even, of course, I show different scenarios, but I've been very clear, especially since the, the 10th of March, that we're ignoring bearish cases for now because there's no point. Yeah, it's not worth anything focusing on the bearish count while we have bullish movement across the market. It's pointless. And all you do is to, to you know, piss off your community because um, you try to, to focus on something which is clearly not there, at least not at the moment. It might be there in the future, but really we can only analyze what we see. You know, we can only stay in the present. There's no point in speculating around you know, what might happen next it's all about what does happen now and what is the projection based on that, what is on the chart now. And that's clearly bullish for now. Price is bullish. Indicators are bullish. There is nothing bearish here at the moment. There's, of course, always risk that markets can turn around, but that's just the nature of it. Yeah, that's the nature of it. Markets are non-linear. Um, it's always probabilities and we can we do our best, really. And we focus on, on higher because it makes sense at the moment. Yeah. There is, of course, a bearish scenario, of course. Yeah, we talked about that in the last video. I might unpack that again in the next one. But it's nothing I particularly focus on. It is nevertheless something we need to watch, okay? The, the goal and the objective of TA is to provide an assessment of the trend, which is clearly up. The Elliott Wave count is clearly up, gives us targets to the upside, but also to inform about alternative scenarios. So, and they are important for the purpose of risk management. Right, we focus on the upside. Hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye.